you know you're dead. First, first before anything, he lets you know you're a dead man. Now what you gonna do about it? You know what I'm saying? He never appears to you like, oh, I love you. Wait, you know, just don't, just, just please believe in me. No, it's like I'm gonna kill you right now. Just like Moses, he was about to kill him. What the woman had to do? They know what God want. All right, so here we go. All right, or even uh, even Abimelech. All right. Believe me, he read it in Genesis, Abimelech, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Abraham went down, he was like, man, this is my, this is my sister, right? He didn't say it was his wife, he said, this is my sister. And Abimelech was like, all right, that's your sister, huh? He was like, go ahead and take all these donkeys and all this cattle, you know what I'm saying? Take all these riches, you know what I'm saying? Don't worry about it. You enjoy yourself. Bring her to me, you know what I'm saying? He started to get at the sister and wife, and then he found out that was the wife. And the way that he found out wasn't because God said, hey, that's another man's wife. Most like God said, you're but a dead man. Just walk, popped up to him. Probably the first time he ever heard from God. You are but a dead man. How the first time you meet God, he tell you, I'm about to kill your butt. Because that's God, that's how God gets your attention. He just look, oh, okay. He got to, it got to be fear. Books say, what is, what's the beginning of all love? I mean, what's the beginning of knowledge of God? Fear the Lord. How are you going to start off telling you, hey, I just want to be your friend. How are you going to fear him? And if you don't fear him, how are you going to know him? Especially when the book says the beginning of this. This you starts, got, out, with, start off with this starts out with you knowing I will offer you right now. People think I'm crazy when I sit here and I tell them, man, let me. I didn't start understanding the book. So I looked at it and I was like, I'm really going to go to hell. You know what I'm saying? Like when I look, like when once that clicked, I was like, oh, now it's starting to open up. <laughs> Wait a second. Now it's starting to open up. You know what I'm saying? That game. How are you going to start off if you ain't got fear? You got to start the whole thing over. You think, it's a lot of these Christians just think they're so far down the road. You know what they're going to tell you? See, God wanted you to fear him, but that was the Old Testament God. It's the New Testament Jesus. What is it all about, brother? Love. It's all about love. That thing all about, with New Testament, all about love. Let me tell you what it's not all about, knowing God. How are you going to know if it just told you to fear at the beginning of it? It, yeah, you don't have knowledge unless you have fear of God. That's what he's telling you. I was reading that thing and I was like, "What's the beginning to understand it? Fear." <laughs> he gonna tell you the fear, the fear of God, is the beginning of understanding, and the turn from wickedness. I don't see how they. I don't even see how they get away with it. That thing crazy to me. They don't. I don't see how they get. It's right there in the book. It ain't like I just put it there. It's right there in the book. <laughs> it it is. Is, they get away with it. these people just hook, line, and sinker. I was like, bro, when I was reading that thing, I was like, there's a whole lot of thou shalt nots, bro. Like, that ain't full that of That thing killed me, bro. I was like, what's going full on? Of, of what not to do. Yeah. You know what I'm <laughs> Even in the New Testament, I was like, bro, I'll do half of this stuff. <laughs> I'm still good, though? I was like, I don't know. That thing was boggling my mind, bro. I couldn't sleep at night trying to figure out, like, bro, like, he said, you're done. But then moms keep saying, ain't nothing I can do to make God love me more. You know what I'm saying? I'm just reading it like, like, I don't know, bro. He's saying he finna get right off the read Revelations. It's like pretty clear. Yeah, you know I was like, saying? I just kept reading it like, man, this can't. I was like, I was like, it can't be that easy. You know, I remember his mom was like, it is that easy. I was like, so we just say, what, God forgive me. And like, that's it. We don't got to do nothing. Well, I, this is right after I read the whole Bible. I read the whole Bible, bro. But I didn't really understand it. And I was like, because I was trying to make sense of what they was telling me and what I was reading. And I was like, I was like, no, nah, it's not that easy. She was like, it really is. That all you got to do. I was like, no. I was like, I was like, I don't. I was like, it, I don't know. I was like, I don't know. It says. I was like, what I was reading, it sounds like God's pretty angry. You know what I'm saying? So that thing was tripping. It took me a while to get it, but that thing was hard, bro. That was hard to figure out. Make a mess of it. I was like, yeah. I mean, they, 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 they don't understand the book because they haven't approached the book right. And so what they try to do is they try to teach. It's like trying to teach a book, but you can't see all of the spots on the page. It's like certain spots on the pages have a big old black ink mark over it, so you don't know what that say. So if you know that you have to teach this, what you have to do is try to connect the dots. Like I only see half of this sentence right here, but I'm thinking this sentence means this. Right? I don't see what the first part, so I don't really don't know what it's about, but... Just based off of the last part, me taking using the context clues and what I've experienced in my life and how I think sh things should be, I would say this is what this sentence is trying to say. But you only have half of the sentence, right? So that's what happens. They try to force it. You know what I'm saying? They don't really know. They just try to force like, oh, well, I think this is what it means. I really don't know what it means, but this is what I think it means. And they start teaching. So that means you got you to gotta interpret the whole book based off of a guess, you know what I'm saying? You start looking at things, and it's like, well, this has to relate to that. 
So therefore, this must mean this, and this must mean that, and they just get it wrong. And that's how they start teaching Balaam wrong, because when they look at it, they look God mad. That's how that's they, they just they they go to the end result, and then anybody, a lot of Christians, a lot of Christians, anybody who the Bible sees is wrong, right? Christians will look at their life in the Bible and be every single thing they do is wrong, every single thing, right? They look at it because it's not real to them, right? It's not it's not it's not like us, right? For them. They say, we, oh, no, we all right. Oh, it's all right. You make a mistake. God wanted you to make that mistake so he can bring you to this. Right? That's how they look at it. You look at somebody who do something wrong in the Bible. No, nah, see, that's, let me tell you. Let me tell you where Adam went wrong when he started naming the, the animals. See, that was God's animals, and he started naming them like his end. That's how they do it because they know that ultimately Adam is going to do something wrong. So that means everything he must have did was wrong. God wasn't ple ever pleased with the man. Right? He didn't ever do nothing right. And that warps their understanding because now they can't identify with Adam, right? Adam's always been wrong. They see themselves as, well, I was wrong a couple times. But my heart was in the right place. They don't see that for Adam. Adam, they just say, you're just an evil sinner. They don't see that for, uh, they don't see that for uh, Balaam, right? Somebody like Balaam, you'll never, Esau, you'll never see, hear no Christian make a defense for them. The Pharisees, You'll never see no Christian make a defense like, oh, the Pharisees only made that because they just didn't know. They've never had that excuse. they evil, reprobate, right? The Pharisees, those are evil hypocrites. Jesus said it himself, right? So they can't identify with it. Now that you can't identify what the Bible is giving you as an example of being wrong, if you can't identify with that, how do you learn? The books say we get uh, these things are written as an example. Yeah, it wasn't no way for the Pharisees. How are we supposed to learn? The children in the wilderness? <clears throat> how are we gonna learn from there if we look at them like, mm hmm, our, our children in the wilderness? All they do, they just complain the whole time. That's how we looked at when we were Christians, that's how we looked at them. We didn't look at them like any of us could be in that same position. We didn't look, we didn't make no excuses for them. We didn't like, well, dang, I mean, they did just come from a country. Imagine us leaving from America and then not having anything to eat. But before that, they didn't have anything to eat, right? You have to put that in perspective. A lot of they, what they, when Christians to teach it, they'd be like, God sent them quail, right? God sent them quail, and they still, they said he sent them manna from the sky. Before he sent manna, what did he send? They are just pacing it. Then they start complaining. And most like, why you keep complaining? And then God sent manna, right? So the first time they complained, they were legit hungry. <laughs> it's like, I didn't have nothing to eat. You know what I'm saying? And you have to think about it. You think God didn't know they were legit hungry? He put them in that position so that they would complain so that they can see, rely on me. Right? Rely on me. I got you. Just trust me. You know what I'm saying? I got you. You know what I'm saying? But then they complain. It was their error. It is an error, right? But don't act like you wouldn't have done something similar or at least been tempted to do the same <laughs> thing like, hey, yo, Moses, in that situation. Man, uh... You don't know nothing about God. Right? Nothing. The only thing you know about God is that this man just got you out of Egypt. And Moses knows him. Moses knows him. That's I it. heard about him from my father Abraham. Moses disappears for 40 days, 40 nights. You know what I'm saying? Where's Moses, Aaron? Mo Aaron, where Moses at? He probably, God probably killed him. We, we saw the, what he did to we the We haven't Egyptians. made it to the promised land yet. We in the middle of the darn desert. We saw some great things happen. Now Moses gone. Who made all this happen in their mind? Moses. Moses. So what you think they're going to say? All right, well, uh, make us a God so that we can keep going. So he make them some golden calf. They like, all right, cool. As long as we got something that God can talk to us through. They can't see the man. This is all a teaching moment for God. Most of God looking at it like, let me show you how it works. And most of God, he putting this stuff in front of them just so they can stumble over it. Because he knows the ones that's going to believe him and the ones that's not. So he put this stuff out here for all of us. He put stumbling blocks for all of us. Right? We a sinner if we put stumbling blocks in front of our brother. That ain't God. God can put stumbling blocks in front of all of us. That's what all that what do you think Satan is? You think Satan just, you know what I'm saying? He just out here, you know what I'm saying? Like God can't control him. Like, I don't know how Satan got out the cage again. That's crazy. God put him out there. Have you seen my servant Job? <laughs> Go holler at him then. Go talk to him. Bro. What do you think he is doing to say he is provoking say? He is like, nah, you ain't seen my servant Job. Oh, you you looking for somebody? You ain't seen Job though. Oh, you know Job. You talking about Job who will shoe all evil? I mean, Job would never do nothing wrong. You think you can get Job? Nah, you can't get Job. You think you can get Go get Job then. Go ahead and get Job then. You know what I'm saying? He was provoking Satan. Say like, man, I'm just, you know what I'm saying, going to and fro looking for somebody slipping. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you ain't, you ain't seen Job though. Nah, Job, he don't do nothing wrong. You can't even get him. 
So he's like, man, let me at him. You know what I'm saying? I bet you, you know what I'm saying? You take away all the stuff, I bet you he curse you to your face. That's what God was looking for. All right. You know what I'm saying? Go get him. Why? Because he hate Job? No, he used it as a moment to teach all of us. Right? All this stuff we look at, we have to be able to identify with it. We have to be able to see the reality in it. And that's why they teach Balaam wrong. Let's go to it. Let's look at Balaam real quick. That's why people are like, I don't understand why God could let this happen to all these people. I'm like, yeah, it's because you don't know him. That's all. You don't know him. How you going to know him if you ain't scared of him? Word. See, it's a fear of reverence. It ain't It ain't a fear. You shut your mouth. You don't know what it is. That boy said my word like the, what, uh, uh, I, something that, the rod that break iron in pieces. What did he say? Uh, he said it's my like a hammer. Like, yeah, hammer that break in pieces. You know what I'm saying? My word like fire. Like, like you know what fire and it's like a hammer that break in pieces. You know, how you not going to be scared of that? I ain't never seen nobody reverence a hammer. <laughs> if you do, you a sinner because you make it an idol. All right, so we're in Numbers 22. It's Numbers chapter 22. It's 22? I thought it was like 30-something. Yeah, it's 22. I thought it was in 30s too, but it's 22. It's, it's Numbers chapter 22. What verse I'm looking for? I'll read the whole thing. Go ahead and start from the get. You want to start the whole the whole thing? It's up to you. I was going to start at, uh, I was just going to give him a little reference. I was going to start when God first told him not to go. All right, give me that. What is it? Uh, where was I? We can call some turkey tonight. I had a little something prepared. I don't care nothing about that though. Some good word come up. We can do it wherever the Most High God take us. Okay, so we start at uh, verse eight. This is uh, number chapter twenty-two, verse eight. Yeah. All right, let's do it. All right, so he said unto them, "Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, as the Lord shall speak unto me." And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. So mm -hmm. this is when the princes of Moab asked Balaam to curse Israel. And, and uh, Balaam was like, okay, hold on, let me go see what God talked about. And God came unto Balaam and said, what men are these with you? And Balaam said unto God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent unto me, saying, behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covers the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them. Perhaps I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. The Israelites, we came out of Egypt and we covered the face of the earth. There's a whole lot of us, is what they're saying. And God said unto Balaam, You shall not go with them, you shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up in the morning and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refused to give me leave to go with you. That's it, right? So he obeyed God. God said, Don't go with him. He went back, and like, Look, y'all better might well go on. He said, Get get thee into your land, might well go and take your butt home. That's what he said, Take your butt home. Most well, so God said, I can't go. Clear, very clear. Let's hear about how he is like, but um, just wait outside. Let me let me ask God again. He ain't none of that happened. This is how Christians have put it to you, but he wanted to go. All right, I'm gonna tell you what they used to tell me. Watch your one. Keep reading. You might need to jump down to the to the second time. Okay, hold on. Okay. And the princes of Moab rose up and they went unto Balak and said fourteen. This is verse fourteen. This is Numbers chapter twenty two, verse fourteen. You want me to jump down some more? Because this is right after. Uh, it's I don't know. You tell me. What did you keep reading? All right. This the, is Numbers chapter 22, verse 14. And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went unto Balak and said, Balaam refused to come with us. Uh -huh. And Balak sent yet again princes more and more honorable than they. And they came to Balaam and said unto him. Well, he sent, I mean, he sent the big dogs this time. He said, he said more and more honorable. He, said, he sent the big dogs this time. Now, surely he'll come with the rich people. Let's see. Thus says Balak, the son of Zippor, let nothing, I pray thee, hinder you from coming unto me. For I will promote you unto every great honor and will do whatsoever you says unto me. Uh, come, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. All right. So notice he said, I'll do whatever you say. Whatever you tell me, whatever you say your price is, I got it. Right. Watch what Balaam say. I'm going to tell you after, after we read what Balaam say, I'm going to show you what the Christian used to tell me. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak. He said, even if Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. Right? He said, if Balaam, I mean, Balak would give me his house full of what? Silver and gold. Silver and gold. He said, I can or I can't? I can't. He said, I still couldn't do it. Right? The Christian used to tell me is like he was setting the price right there. He was saying, give me a house full of silver and gold. Right? That's what I'm asking for. Like, that's my price. I was like, that's not what it say. Right? That's, not, that's just not what it say. But what they trying to, what they try to make it like, like Balaam was just like throwing something out there. Like, you know what I'm saying? That might do the trick. You know what I'm talking about? 
You know what I'm saying? I can't do it, but that might do the trick. But that's not what he said. He's saying, this is the most extravagant thing I can think of right now. And even if you gave me that, I couldn't do it. Was Balak really about to come out of his house, his palace? He got a palace. He, he, was Balak really going to be like, okay, curse these people. You can have my palace and I'm filled it with silver and gold. He had given them something in his mind that was impossible. He's like, even if you did this, which I know you're not going to do, right? I still couldn't do it. This is a man who's obeying God. Christians don't want to see it that way because they like evil Balaam, right? Balaam is evil, evil Balaam, right? But this is the man who's obeying God. Watch this. Now, therefore, I pray you, tarry ye also here this night that I may know what the Lord will say unto me more. And God came unto Balaam at night and said to him, unto him, if the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, you shall, that, that shall you do. So show me how Balaam went to God begging God, please let me go, Lord. I mean, I just want to go so bad, Lord. I told him no, but I just want you to go. God said, tell him no. He told him no. They come back. He told him no. Right? God already told me no. After that, then the Most High God was like, if they ask you again, go ahead and go. Go ahead and go. But what I tell you to say, that's what you say. Don't say nothing else, boy. Right? Watch this. We might need to jump down now. And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his donkey and went with the princes of Moab. Mm -hmm. And God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood. Now, hey, look at that. God mad because he went. God just told him to go, though, right? Yeah. God mad because he went. So now that's why they like, this is, this is the part that they don't understand. When they don't understand something, they have to connect the dot that sometimes isn't there. So God mad. Book says because he went. Right? God is unpleased with him going. If God is unpleased with him going, he must have done something wrong because God did originally tell him no. So there was something about what Balaam did that tricked God. No, that doesn't make sense. It was something about what Balaam did that God didn't like, and then he went. So now they're just connecting dots. So it's like, now that's why they look at it and be like, he set a price. Because they're trying to figure out what did Balaam do wrong? You know what I'm saying? Balaam did something wrong, so what did he do wrong? He set a price. When he threw out that house full of silver and gold, he set a price. Right? He went and he knew God didn't want him to go. <laughs> what about when God said, go ahead and go? He didn't say, if you want to go, just go. He said, no. If they ask you again, go. And then when you go, say what I tell you to say. All right? People don't understand that God is looking past what's happening. Right? So we're about to see how God is looking beyond all this. Watch this. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. What verse is this? 22. This is verse 22. This is number chapter 22, verse 22. Now he was riding upon his donkey, and his two servants were with him. Mm -hmm. And the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And the donkey turned aside out of the way and went into the field. And Balaam smote the donkey to turn her into the way. Mm -hmm. But the angel of the Lord stood in the path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side and a wall on that side. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself into the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. Mm -hmm. And he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn, neither to the right or to the left. Mm -hmm. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam. And Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the donkey with his staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto you that you have smitten me these three times? And Balaam said to the donkey, because you have mocked me, I would, there were, I would there were a sword in my hand, for now would I kill thee. And the donkey said unto Balaam, am I not your donkey, upon which you have ridden ever since I was yours unto this day? Was I ever what to do so unto thee? And he said, nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto Watch him, what the angel of the Lord said. Wherefore hast thou smitten thy donkey these three times? Mm -hmm. Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. Your way is perverse before me. Right? Your way is perverse before me. What you about to do is bad. The way you going is bad. Keep going. And the donkey saw me and turned from me these three times. Unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee and saved her alive. He said, this donkey just saved your darn life, boy. He's talking about you hitting that donkey. You don't even realize the donkey saving your life. 
That's how a lot of us are. Right? Stuff go wrong in our life. Car keep on breaking down. We on our way to do something. We know we ain't got no business doing. Right? At least Balaam, most high God told him to go. We know for a fact we ain't got no business doing. We sit here mad. Our car get, keep breaking down. You know what I'm saying? We hitting ourselves on the wheel. You know what I'm saying? Goodness gracious. We keep trying to get it fixed. It just ain't going right. Can't afford it, all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? They end up, we ain't had no business doing what we were trying to do anyway. Right? But we sitting here cursing God. And, 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 and I mean, we are sitting here uh, uh, cursing the devil and praising God. You know what I'm saying? God is the one that's sitting, that's sitting there in front of us. Right? It's important that if we know God, we can look at the, his, his tactics and we can see the things that are happening and be like, I know what this means. Let me consider. Right? Balaam couldn't consider because he didn't know. That's why the most high God opened his eyes so he could see him. You know what I'm saying? After that, he's like, okay, let me explain to you what's going on. Make sure he knew. Once he knew, he bowed down. What do you think that was? That was repentance. That was fear. Okay. All right, look, that was fear. Now he can try to understand something. He got a little bit of fear. Right? Keep going. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I knew not that you stood in the way against me. Now, therefore, if it displease you, I will get me back again. So let's just look at the timeline here. They come and ask. You know what I'm saying? He say no. You know what I'm saying? Second time around, they come again. He say, nah, even if you give me a house full of gold and silver, I still can't do it. Then, most I got say, if you, they ask you again, go ahead and go. After that, he go. Right? Saddle up, he go. You know what I'm saying? Then he, you know, he go on down there, you know what I'm saying? Donkey come, you know what I'm saying, trying to avoid the angel uh the angel of the Lord. Angel of the Lord appeared to him. He's like, listen, you know what I'm saying, your way before me. After that, man bowed down the way perverse and he says, it, I, I sinned. He looked at it, he said, I sinned. I did something wrong. If I did something wrong, I'll turn around. Right now. Let's see what the angel of the Lord said. And the angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, Go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak unto you, that you shall speak. So Balaam Same went. Same exact word that he heard before. No. Go ahead and go. So in both scenarios, he only went after the Most High God told him to go. Right? Now he's going. Right? We ain't got to read it all. There's multiple occasions. Different places, different setups, where he's, uh, Balak is asking him, Curse these people. Balaam gets up there and he blesses them. Just like the Most High God, exactly as the Most High God said. So what was perverse in the way? What was bad? What was the thing that was messed up? What was the sin that Balaam committed? It had nothing to do with him going at that moment. I'm going to show you where he messed up. I think. 24 maybe? What? Uh, Numbers 24? I think it's in Deuteronomy when Moses uh, revealed it. Twenty-four what? How twenty-four start? Man, when, you got me thinking. Maybe and it is when wrong. Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he went not, as the other times, to seek for enchantments, but he set his face toward the wilderness. Right. So you see here, each time he tried to to curse him, he was looking for a way to curse him. Then he is like, eh, nope, can't find anything. Most High God told me to bless him, so he bless him. Then this last time he looked, he is like, oh, I see, it pleases God that I bless him. He's like, man, I ain't even looking for nothing else to say. I'm just about to bless him. This is a man who's obeying God. Give me 25, verse 1. And Israel abode in Shittim, mm -hmm. and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. The, the people could began to do what? Commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. Mm -hmm. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat and bow down to their gods. They did what? They ate and they bowed down to their gods? They committed whoredom, right? Who they do all this stuff with? The daughters of Moab. The daughters of Moab. So the Most High God's people, you know what I'm saying, ended up right after all this, right? Remember, Balak was the king of who? Moab. So it's the king of Moab coming down saying, curse these people. Then all of a sudden, somehow, we get mixed up with the daughters of Moab. You know what I'm saying? We see them daughters. We like, hey, sweet thing, what you got on? You know what I'm saying? Then we start messing with the daughters, committing whoredom. Then after that, they get to telling us about their gods. 
it's like, this is what I got to do. I'll bow down to your God all day. What are we talking about? You know what I'm saying? So we commit our whoredoms with them, bow down to their gods, all prayer part of the little ceremony that we got going on. Just out there just rumping it up, right? Then, now, we end up being punished by the Most High God for that. What did Balak want? He just wanted us to be cursed. He like, man, these people, these people covering the whole earth. All the land is covered by this. It's so many of them. And they coming our way. He like, man, go ahead and curse these people for me. No, I can't curse them. He couldn't curse them. Most High God told him very clearly, just say what I told you to say. Right? He couldn't curse them. So he said what the Most High God told him to say. You get past that, right after that, somehow, all these little girls start running around with our men, and we start having, doing what we do, and, 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 and bowing down to their gods, right? Then God punishes us after that. Now God can get us. Essentially, we're cursed at that point, right? Balaam set that up. It's, it's Numbers 31, and say verse 16, but give me about verse 14 just in case. And Moses was wroth with the officers of the host, with the captains over thousands and over hundreds, which came from the battle. And Moses said unto them, Have ye saved all the women alive? Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. Right? So you see Moses telling us right here. He said, These women are the ones that caused us to trespass in the, in the uh, land of uh, uh, Peor. Right? He said they caused us to trespass. And how did they do it? Through whose counsel? Balaam. Go ahead and read that thing one more time for me. Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. So after Balaam got done blessing these people, Balaam went back behind their backs and he said, listen. Now, maybe, you know what I'm saying, God said, I can't curse them. You know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? If you want them to be cursed, you just want to get them to sin. That's all you got to do. You know what I'm saying? I can't. Now, listen, I can't curse them. Now. I'm just telling you, if you want them to be cursed, I don't know, maybe throw some women out there, be like idols. I heard they have problems with those type of things. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean, I'm just saying. So he gave them counsel. The women went out there, and that's how all that stuff jumped off, right? So the Most High God, that's why the Most High God was looking at him like, your butt made me very nervous, right? Because he knew that you are about to do something that ain't going to fly. I should kill you right now. I should just kill you before you can even get to it. And I'm like, man, if you want me to turn around, I'll turn around. That's something we can identify with. That's something that every one of us, every one of us, when we learn some, when we learn about the truth, right? One of the first things we start thinking is, I mean, I mean that's a sin, but does that mean I can't go to parties anymore? Right? I mean, I know I can't get drunk, but can I like technically still just have a drink? We start looking at how can we get around it, right? I know it's a sin, but I know I'm not supposed to do that, but how can I still kind of do what I want to do? without doing what God told me not to do. That's what Balaam was doing. Balaam looking like, okay, I can't curse him, but I still want this money that you offer. You know what I'm saying? How can, how can I get them cursed for you without me actually cursing them? I got it. Sleep with these women. You'll be all right. Right? That's something we can identify with. That's something we can learn from. Then we can look at it and be like, well, instead of us trying to get as close as we can to sin without sinning, Let's stay away from it, because we know what happened to Balaam, right? We see what happened to Balaam. Balaam was tinkering on them edges, and his butt got it, right? Book already told you he was looking for a way to curse him, right? Looking for a way to curse him, and all of a sudden, I can't do it. Most of God said I can't, but he was still looking for a way to curse him, right? He didn't take into account. Most of God already said, don't curse him, so why are you even looking anymore, Right? That's something we can identify with. No, nah, he didn't disobey at first. Technically, he'd even disobey, right? But the Most High God said that his heart was bad. So then he then tried to get somebody to do something that was a sin. And in that, he put a stumbling block before the brother. And that's his sin, right? That's his sin. Those are things that we can look at. We can say, okay, I can learn from that. But if I teach you that, 
you know what, Balaam was wrong just because he went, even though that's not what the books say. How do I learn from that? How do I learn from that? Because now you put me in a position where even though God told me something directly to go, I'm supposed to not go because I think that's what God really want me to do. He's telling me to go, but I think God really want me to stay, so I'm just going to stay. So now what you just do? You just taught yourself how to disobey God. That's you just taught yourself that you're smarter than God. That's only a bad relationship. That's how it go, though. That's what, exactly what they look at. They look at this, gee, ba- Balaam shouldn't have went. How he shouldn't have went if God told him to go? If God tell you to go, how you shouldn't have went? But that's their mind. Their mind is, I'm smarter than God. You got to be able to think past God. See, God might say something to you, brother, but you got to know God just testing you, okay? God was testing Abraham. I bet you his butt did it. He about to, he about to kill Isaac. What do you think Abraham was like, God ain't about to have me kill my son. God, stop playing. No, God, I love my son. I would never do that. Abraham wouldn't have nothing to this day. None of us would be here. Abraham was a faithful man. He looked at him, grabbed that knife, looked, son, you know what I'm saying? God to provide the rent. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you talking about? God to provide you good. He about to stay your hand. Hold on now. I was, just, I was just testing you. You passed my test, though. I like that. You know what I'm saying? Now that you, you wouldn't hold back your only son from me. He who loves his mother more than me is not worthy of me, right? He who loves his That's father book. more than me is not worthy of me. That's why Abraham right. would call the friend of the Most High God. He my disciple. You know right, who, I mean? who else would call the friend of the Most High God? Uh, Moses. You ain't gonna find any people. You ain't gonna find none of these Christians. Oh God, God called me his friend. That's, that's crazy. That's nonsense. When you shut your mouth, you ain't never said. You ain't never heard it. I ain't never said nothing like that to you. You ain't got no prophet that'll testify to it. Because they don't obey the man. A friend is somebody who keep his commandments. That's what Yahweh Shua told us. Right? That's what we look at. We are looking at things. That's why these Christians can say, I can, I can do what I want to do and still be saved. Right? They're not going to put it like that. You know how they're going to put it? Everybody's sinning. But God still loves me. Right? That thing, it sounds better that way. AKA, I can do what I want to do and still be saved. That's all it means. I can do what I want. I can live however I want to live and still be saved. You say that to them and be like, no, no, you can't live however you want. So what can't you do? Just ask them, like, okay, what, I mean, what's too far? I mean, you just have to believe, but if you believe, you're not going to want to do all that stuff. But, I mean, let's just say I believe and I do do some of that stuff. Like, what won't I want to do when I believe? I mean, you just going to want to stop sinning, so I'm going to stop sinning? Well, now everybody slip. They, you can't, they can't answer this stuff. They're going to make a fool out of themselves because they know. So, at the end of it, I can still sin, and I'm still going to be saved in your book. But that sounds a lot like what Balaam, that, that sounds a lot like what y'all think Balaam did. Balaam said, God said, don't go, but he really wants you to stay. I mean, God said, go, but he really wants you to stay. So you end up staying. So you disobeyed God, and you still did what God said. That's how they think about this stuff. I can disobey God and still do what God said. That's how they think. God wanted me to sin. God wanted me to have and be and, and, and divorce my ex-wife, right? Because he wanted me to meet my second wife. That make a whole lot of sense. Uh, it make a whole lot of sense when the book say you you divorce, you commit adultery. You divorce and get you another, you commit adultery. That make a lot of sense that God wanted you to do that. He wanted me to go through that first marriage, so I'd be prepared for this marriage. That's the type of stuff Steve Harvey be out here talking about. Yeah, buddy. On this like third, fourth marriage, talking about yeah, I've been through those situations, so I could be prepared for my wife right now. Yeah, that make that make a whole lot of sense. Out here giving writing book, giving people marital advice. That's right. <laughs> you in adultery right now, giving people. That make a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Let, let me go get. Let me get two copies. Well, I you know what I'm saying? I best with the hope of that comedy, but what do you get to talk about? God, he's a I'm funny. Like, he's, just, a, he's a funny I guy. Like stop talking. You know what I'm saying? I will laugh at you all day. That's about it. I ain't getting no book from you. I ain't getting no marital advice from not 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 an adulterer. That's crazy. It doesn't make sense. But this is their mind, right? Because we haven't been taught. The, the 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 average Steve Harvey even he a leader he on TV and all that he ain't been taught no Bible how he know how he gonna know nobody gonna nobody taught him this stuff they they've been teaching the same garbage it's just now the Most High God is starting to wake us up all right these people don't know that's why they look at the book wrong they teach it wrong I don't know nothing about no Balaam when your pastor taught did he read it he read two verses out of that thing and just start explaining let me tell you about uh, uh, Balaam. <laughs> Sometimes uh, uh, God go uh, put a donkey uh, in your way. <laughs> Sometimes uh, God uh, got an angel of uh, death uh, with a knife. Uh, 
cut off your head. <laughs> Let me tell you, sometimes <laughs> you want to go, and it's a narrow place. <laughs> but it's too narrow. Donkey can't move. Can't go to the left. Can't go to the right. Can't go up. And can't go down. And God is right there. <laughs> complete fool out of us. Oh, man. They don't know. And because they don't know that nobody's taking the time to actually look at the book. So if that's all we hear, and that thing just sound good, somebody playing the organ in the background, you feel them chills going down your spine, what's the first thing you're going to say? I got the darn spirit. Holy Spirit just came over me. And that's pastor preaching it. You start jumping down, the, jumping up and down, you loving it and all this stuff. Ooh, pastor preaching today. You get the same feeling from a Beyonce concert. The same exact feeling. Same exact feeling. Whenever you hear your favorite artist on TV, you get that same chill. Man, that's a good song. It has nothing to do with God. But we've convinced ourselves of all this craziness and let these spirits come on us. And we, we think it's the spirit of God. It's the spirit of something. It's definitely the spirit of something. Ain't God, though. If it was God, you'll be obeying the word. Right? Let's go ahead and get started. Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear the word, hear and learn of the word of God that's given to us by the Most High God. Uh, all honor goes to the Father, through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, in this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that's in the room, to the saints watching in, saints couldn't make it. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's open up to. Uh, what do you want to open up to? Let's open up to. Uh, Where are we at? Genesis. Uh, no, we don't talk about the end gathering. Give me uh, Leviticus uh, twenty-three. Just continue away from from last week. Mm -hmm. Leviticus twenty-three thirty. Hey, uh, dibs on some water. Uh, oh, my bad, bro. You good. Got some lemonade in there. <laughs> All right. It's Leviticus 23.33. Costco got like the big old 40 packs of water. That's what I need. For like two ninety nine, bro. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Bro, give me some so I can get some money, because I get tired of spending all my money at Smith's for all them waters, man. That thing is ridiculous. How you get like 40? My family killed them things in like three days, too. That's what it is. 23 what? It's uh, 2333. Let me try to shoot through this real quick. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speaking to the children of Israel, saying, The 15th day of the seventh month, shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Mm -hmm. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you. What's a holy convocation? Uh, gathering. Holy gathering. It's a holy gathering. It's a sacred assembly. All right, keep going. <laughs> and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. Mm -hmm. These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be the holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering, and a meat offering, a sacrifice, and a drink offering, and drink offerings, everything upon his day. Mm -hmm. Besides the Sabbaths of the Lord, and besides your gifts, and besides all your vows, and besides all your free will offerings, which you shall give unto the Lord. Also on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. Mm -hmm. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Mm -hmm. 
And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches, and palm trees, mm -hmm. and the boughs of the thick trees, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. Right? He said you're going to take the boughs, right? So in other words, you're going to take the branches off of, off of these trees, the palm trees and all that. And then you're going to rejoice before the Most High God. And you're going to do that for seven days. Watch what we do with them. And ye shall keep it as a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in booths seven you shall days. Dwell in what? Booths seven days. You ever heard of feast of booths? Feast of booths. That's another name for this tent, this uh this uh feast day, or this feast week. All right, feast of booths, and the reason why is because it represents a time where we were in a temporary place. Right, we walked around with we walked around with tents. All right, that's how we got around. We walked around the wilderness with tents. The whole, our whole tabernacle was a big tent, right? You put that thing together, this is how we walked around. It was a whole bunch of poles, right, and some curtains, some big old blankets, you know what I'm saying, pretty much, you know what I'm saying, curtains that, that flew. So you'll, put, you'll set up the, the poles and set up the walls to it, then you'll throw a curtain over that thing, and it would be divided by curtains, you know what I'm saying? So this whole thing is just a big tent, and we would go into it, this part of the tent, the Holy of Holies, this part of the tent, was just the temple, right? Or as the temple, it was the tabernacle, right? And you had the outside, and we had set up a wall around it and everything. All of it was portable, though. All of it was a big old tent. That's all it was. So what he was showing us is he's like, this is temporary for y'all. This is what the feast represented back when we were in the wilderness. I want you to keep this year by year to remember when you were back in the wilderness, all right? So we would dwell and we would sleep and dwell in tents for that whole week. All right? That's what this was about for us. Keep going. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. This is what, the, this, is what this is supposed to All this stuff is supposed to, it, it's supposed to remind us and put us in mind of God. It's supposed to be something that we teach. Our kids are supposed to ask us, why, 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 do we, why do we celebrate Passover? Oh, let me tell you. And then now we can teach our kids history, right? Why is for this week, Dad, why do we always sleep in tents for this week? So I can teach you history. We got to start doing that, by the way. Yeah, buddy. You know what I'm saying? Just so, like, so now I can see, I can, well, now my son going to have me. I don't understand. I want to sleep in my darn bed. No, nah, boy, let me explain something to you. Most High God, he brought us out of Egypt, and we dwelled in tents 40 years. I'm just asking you eight days, seven days, right? That's all I'm asking. This seven days, all right? That's all he asking of it now. This, this is easy work, but that's what we have to do. We have to be able to make sure that we we keep these days. Not not just because we keeping them. Not just because well we gave up Christmas, so we gotta have something else. We ain't got time for that. So we keeping them. Our stuff means something. Rest of these people's stuff, that stuff don't mean nothing. What they? Is Jesus the reason for? Oh, shut your mouth. Jesus ain't no reason for nothing y'all doing, right? Not even the fake Jesus. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This stuff ain't got nothing to do with this stuff ain't got nothing to do with him. Right? Our stuff actually means something. We can say God is the reason for our seasons. We can say Yahushua is the reason for these seasons. Right? Give me numbers. It's numbers chapter one. I just want the first part of numbers. Numbers chapter one, give me verse forty eight. After that, grab Philippians. Hey, my man said uh genealogy is not so boring no more. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I think it think took me a couple times. It, it, to read it took me about yeah, it took me about two times to read the whole Bible. I was like, all right, now this it took me a couple times. I was like, whoo. You know what I'm saying? By the third time I read it, I was like, that the genealogy is something special to me about the third time I read it. Yeah. But before that, I was like, eh. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying? And Joseph gave yeah, and Adam, the son of God. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Just go right from there. Just go to there. Beginning to end. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, it starts to mean something to you once you once you once you can start connecting some of those names to other other events in the Bible, and it lets you know, oh, this is where he come from, and it start having meaning. Like, oh, God cursed him, and we see even down here his son is cursed, right? So it start all meaning something. You start connecting stuff. So that's important. This is Numbers chapter one. Give me verse forty-eight. Watch this. Let's see what they what they what they are dealing with. 
For the Lord had spoken unto Moses, saying, Only you shall not number the tribe of Levi, Levi Why not? neither take the sum of them among the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. But you shall appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of testimony, and over the vessels thereof, and over all things that belong to it. Mm -hmm. They shall bear the tabernacle and all the vessels thereof, and they shall minister unto it, mm -hmm. and shall encamp round about the tabernacle. What verse is that? Mm, 50. That's Numbers 1? Yeah. Give me Numbers 148 again. I thought it said something about tents in there. For the Lord has spoken unto Moses, saying, Only thou shalt not number the tribe of Levi, neither take the sum of them among the children of Israel. Look, okay, what about this one? And when the tabernacle sets forward, the Levite shall take it down. And when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levite shall set it up. And the stranger that comes near shall be put to death. Give me uh, Numbers 2, 48. Whose Bible is this? Ain't no 48 numbers, too. What's the last verse? 34. All right, grab a Philippians for me. I was looking for uh, somewhere in number. I think it's numbers one. Somewhere in number one. They say they, they, they was in tents. All the, they talk about all the people being in tents. Mm. Something like that. But uh, Grab uh, Philippians chapter two for me, verse one. It's Philippians chapter two. We don't go to Philippians much. That's that uh I can do all things. There's some good stuff in Philippians. <laughs> yeah, Christian definitely, yeah. Christian should be Philippians as well. Christian should write all them books up though. Anything <laughs> Paul wrote, Christian should write them things up. Yeah, because he wrote them to Gentiles and everybody They can identify. They feel like they can they really can't, but they, they feel like they can identify with that stuff. Uh Philippians what? They be like Romans up. They do. Romans and Corinthians. <laughs> they like they are like some Romans and Corinthians. I'll be like, good gracious. <laughs> I'll be trying to be like, that's not that's not what he that's not exactly what it's saying. You know what I'm saying? Like kinda, but that's not yeah, exactly like what a little bit, saying. but you know what I'm saying? Let me let me let me you know what I'm you give you some backstory. <laughs> let me give you some backstory. <laughs> Philippians what? This is Philippians chapter two, give me verse one. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, like, no, man, like, whatever, dude. <laughs> the most high don't got nothing about you playing basketball. You don't got nothing to do with it. Like, he trying to save, we try to save souls out here. You talking about you know, jump man, shots. You know, see, he knocking down shots. Yeah, him and Lecrae. Chapter 2, verse 1. Best friends. Lecrae's my best friend. <laughs> You know, <laughs> all things are possible. I get, I give him that way. You know, what I'm saying technically, you know, you get away with that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, knee recovery. Yeah, you, right yeah, you, you can get away As with that. As it relates to basketball, I think it's shaky though. Right, right. You know I'll leave you alone about that one. <laughs> finally got my crossover back. You know what I'm saying? Okay. All right. It's Philippians chapter two. Give me verse one. If there be therefore any consolation, consolation in the Messiah, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship in the spirit of any, oh, in the spirit, if any, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye may be like-minded, having the same love, being one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Mm -hmm. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Mm -hmm. Let this mind be in you, which is also in the Messiah, Yahushua, mm -hmm. who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. All right. That's real humility. All right. We have we have an idea of humility. And right, right now, what people see as humility is pretending like. You're something less, right? Like, I really know what I am, and but I'm going to pretend like I don't know, right? Like, um, 
I know I'm the best basketball player. But I'm going to tell everybody, no, nah, I'm not the best. Yeah, I'm the best. No, there's a lot of people out there better than me. But I know I'm the best. Uh, and what we're going to look at that, oh, he's so humble. That's not humility, right? And, and right here, the most high God is saying, knowing, like, I, I'm equal with God, and I don't think that's robbery. I don't think I took nothing from God. That thing is how it's supposed to. I'm equal with God. I ain't robbed nothing from nobody, right? I ain't got to say God is less for me to be him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm equal with God, and that thing is how it's supposed to be. And still, knowing that, I'm still going to serve you as if I'm just a regular man. But the whole time, I want you to know I'm God, but I'm serving you like a regular man. That's a difference, right? right? It ain't, it ain't it's like not he pretending didn't say. like, oh, well, no, I'm not God, guy. No, you know, I'm no. not. I mean, he's the big guy. I'm just, it's, he not, said it it's clear. not that fake. I'm the man, boy. He said, me and the father are one. I'm just taking a lower position right now. Right. Right? That's humility. I'm letting you know I'm the king, and I'm going to wipe your feet. That's humility. Right? Getting down and doing the work that, uh, that, that, that we would see as a servant or a peasant, right? And maintaining my, my status as kingdom is real humility. Me being the best player in the world. But then going down and helping children become a better basketball player as if I'm just some regular AAU coach or something like that. Right? That's humility. It's not pretending like you're not the best. That's fake humility. That's just easy. That's just, you know, well, you know, I'm not the best. Only I'm comfortable saying that because I know all y'all know I'm the best already. I bet you won't have that tune. When nobody, when nobody knew you were the best, I, I, I guarantee you wouldn't walk around saying, oh, I'm not the best. You was out there trying to do whatever you can to prove it. As soon as people believe you the best, Oh, I'm just a regular guy, guy. <laughs> just a regular guy. It's that fake stuff. Right? We have to make sure our humility is correct and it's real. You know what I'm saying? Like the most high God. Keep going. That's a little tangent. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Mm -hmm. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, mm -hmm. that the name of Yahshua every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Yahshua the Messiah is Lord, to glory of to the glory of God the Father. Right? So we look at this and he was put in a tent. It's the most high God we are talking about. Right? But he got made into flesh. Temporary. Temporary dwelling place. Right? That's just a tent for him. This ain't home. It's just, you know, I'm just out here in the wilderness right now. Right? That's all it is. That's all y'all sure was. Right? He put himself in a temporary tent inside of some clothes. You know what I'm saying? I mean, inside of uh, some skin. Right? Most of God didn't have none of that stuff. So it was a tent for him. That's what we look at. That's what the Feast of Booths is about for all of us. Right? This stuff that we in right now, it has to be for us that are going with him. We got to be put off. This is temporary. We got to take all this off. Peter once said. we take all this off, then we got to put on something else. We got to put on some incorruptible, uncorruptible, incorruptible. Why is that? Incorruptible. All right. Grab John for me. John 12. Peter said, it's time for me to put off my tent. It's John chapter 12, verse 35. You know where that's at, Peter? Uh, it's towards the end. It's first or second? I can't think of it. It got to be second. It got to be first, right? I don't know. Chapter 12, verse 35. Is that when he was like, I ran the race? Or was that Paul that said, I ran the race? Yeah, Paul. Okay. John what? John 12, verse 35. Then Yahshua said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walks in darkness knows not where he is going. While you have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things speak, spake Yahshua and departed, and did hide himself from them. He was letting them know, this is temporary. He said, man, it's a little while. Y'all going to have some light with you. You better walk in the light. You mess around and be children of the light. Only going to be a little while, though. Right? He's letting us know it's temporary. That's what a tent was about. That's what this whole feast is about, just letting us know. A lot of this stuff is temporary. 
right? A lot of people mess up because they they so they so hung up on death and tragedy and all these different things. Most of our guys letting you know that's just temporary. You focus on me. It's way more than that. That's why a little baby died, car crash, kill innocent people or people we think is innocent and all that stuff. Oh yeah, I understand, and it's sad and. It's sad for us, too. It's sad for everybody, right? It's a terrible thing, right? Because we look at it and we miss people, right? And that's, that, that, that's just the reality of it. But at the same time, for us, that's not the end of the world. That thing don't stop nothing, right? Even the people that die, that's not the end for them, right? It's more for us. So it's just temporary, right? That's what we look at. It's Romans. Give me uh, Romans 12. We just talked about Romans. Give me Romans 12. It's Romans chapter 12. We can start at verse 1. <laughs> boy, boy read that thing Comb that thing up and down Don't know <laughs> Don't know what are you talking about That's alright bro Yeah <laughs> You good man you Yeah you gonna get it now you know what I'm saying? The, way, the, way, the way you eager And the way the questions you ask Man you keep at it You'll be alright Keep on reading through the book That's what it's about That's what it's about That's what it's about man most high God give you a heart to actually read it for yourself and understand it for yourself, man. That's it. And most high God, you know what I'm saying, he, he blessed us and blessed you at the same time because he gave He gave, He gave, gave us knowledge just so you can get it. Right? So mm -hmm. that you, you know what I'm saying, he, he put us on the path that we can kind of figure some of this stuff out, that we can help you along so that you can figure even more out and help somebody else. Yeah. All right? That's what the most high God is looking at us for. Just remember, anything he teaches, it ain't because, it ain't because he like us. <laughs> to give it to somebody I else. I can that guarantee it ain't. He ain't taught me nothing just because, like, oh well, I think you pretty cool, Philip. Nah, it's crazy, right? Whole thing, whole time he teaching me something just so I can say it to somebody else. He's like, I got, I got a couple people need to learn something. I'll let you know at least this much. That way you can teach them what they need to know. That's all it's about. All these people that know different stuff. That's all it is. It's just different people know different stuff. Cause the most I got trying to. He don't want everybody to think. He don't want nobody. To, Nobody's going to show themselves, who's going to show themselves faithful over the little bit that he gives them, right? A lot of people don't, so they learn just a little bit, and they're wrong about everything else, just so somebody walk in there, hear the right thing, and it's just that one person. He got a whole church of a billion people, and it's just one little sentence that he got to say that one person need to hear, leave that church, and go to a next person to get the other piece of it. And they're going to like, he a sinner, but one thing he said was right, Right? And they can build on that. A lot of these people, that's all they only, just like Balaam. What do you think Balaam's purpose was? All his purpose, his only purpose was bless these people. Right? Bless them. That's all I want you for. Just testify to all these people that these is my people. That's all he did. So now Balak know, all these people know now. After that, he did his sin. You're done. You're good. We're good with you. You served your purpose. You're a sinner. But I still use you to bless. I still use you to speak the word of God. Yeah, no different for a lot of these pastors. All of them sinners. They're just sinners. I ain't gonna say all the pastors sinner, but a lot of these pastors are just sinners. Sinners. They tell you, I ain't saying nothing that they ain't gonna tell you. A lot of them are standing up there. I'm a sinner just like you. Tell me they don't say that. Hey, we all sin. How you gonna get mad? Cause I call you a sinner. Then you call yourself a sinner. It's cool. I call you a sinner. All the oh, okay. That's that fake humility. I call you a sinner. It's a problem. All somebody offended now. You just got done calling yourself a sinner and gloried in it. That thing is a point of glory in the Christian church. Nobody sin more than me, let me tell you. Okay. You, pre you, you preaching the sermon? Okay. That thing <laughs> make a lot of sense. <laughs> they don't know what they thought of. <laughs> For real. Hey, uh, uh, brother. A uh, brother. A uh, bro uh, brother. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's all right. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I call you brother. Ain't nothing wrong with calling them bishop, bishop. I still ain't gonna call them. I don't, I still, I don't believe I still it. break out the book. I'm like, okay, you a bishop, huh? I get to reading uh, First Timothy 3. You know what I'm saying? saying? How many wives you got? Okay. Are this your second wife? Disqualified. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so you're not a bishop? Okay. Not giving the filthy lucre, man. 
how many offerings you just take? <laughs> we out here. I'm just, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm just trying to figure this thing out. Right. I believe. I believe. You ever had one? Yeah. Ever heard one call itself apostle? That thing be killing. I'm taking a revelation. You, as soon as you see, as soon as you see somebody call you apostle. Just step away from the whole church. Old church, I mean, whole church don't know nothing. Just step away from the whole. You'll read our revelations. Uh, your name ain't on the list. Yeah, you your know what I'm saying. <laughs> revelations. <laughs> how many gates? Twelve. It's twelve. It ain't thirteen gates. It's twelve. Twelve gates. It's only twelve gates. And each gate had a name of what? The apostle. Goodness gracious! So I just want to know where your name gonna fit in. <laughs> which which apostle you pushing out so you can get in? Maybe Paul. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like Paul technically wasn't like around. You know what I'm saying? So somehow your butt got before Paul, maybe. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? You got on that 12th gate. You know what I'm saying? Maybe your, like it's hyphenated. It's like Paul hyphen your name. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You sharing gates. Please. You know what I'm saying? You don't get out of my face with that book. Say 12 apostles. I don't know how you slid your butt in there in 2017. <laughs> that, that long time. <laughs> that thing boggles my darn mind. You just got your butt up in there, didn't you? I hear there's a whole lot of apostles on Facebook. If apostle did that, now I'd be like, man, don't even comment on my stuff. I might, I, I'm likely to darn delete your butt. <laughs> I ain't got time for you to know apostle. You going to sit here talking to me about an apostle. You even know what apostle means. You sitting here lying about God. You just going to sit here and lie. Them prophets, too. Prophets, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to get them in much trouble because technically it's possible. I know you lying, but technically it's possible. That's how I be looking up. You know what I'm saying? But you a pastor. That thing's just easy money for me. I ain't, I ain't even <laughs> easy. We can you, just get around you all just that. You're shameful. You know what I'm saying? Right. You, ain't even, you ain't even got no business. Well, you can't even fake tongues in the yeah. church. You just, yeah, like, it ain't nothing you can do to prove that one. At least a, a, a prophet, you can do something to prove it. You know what I'm saying? There's a, there's a route to being a prophet. There ain't no route to being an apostle in 2017. <laughs> yeah, cut that. Same people they lost their darn mind. But we fought. We don't. We just got to teach our people the word. That what they, ain't that what they say? Where they get that from? You got to start multiple churches. That, that's what they believe, though. I was talking to you, I was like, what makes you a apostle? Well, you see, I was a bishop, and then I started this church, and I traveled, and God called me for a ministry of traveling and setting up churches. And that's what makes me an apostle. You see, Paul, he went up, and he set up church. I was like, well, that's, that's one apostle. Where was Peter, though? Jerusalem. Where was James? Jerusalem. Where was John? <laughs> Jerusalem. What church did they set up? Mm hmm So they not apostles then? Oh. I mean, everything, they get, it, you just tear it down with the, but they don't have, they look at one guy, that's the only apostle they know it, Paul. They don't know, they don't even recognize, they don't even know nothing about the rest. Paul wrote all these books, that's the only one, they don't mess with none of these other books. Is a, let me see what Paul talking. They about. don't touch John. First they John, touching. they don't touch. What John. they gonna do with John? <laughs> they don't. Whole touch time John. John lumping them over the head. You bet not sin. You bet not sin. If you sin, you don't know the man. They gotta skip past. You know how much twinkle toes they gotta do when they in John. You know what I'm saying? Let me read John one, one through about three. Then I'll skip on down to verse fourteen. None of the rest of that is any good. We can be good on the rest. Let me go to chapter two. I don't want to read none of the first maybe 16 verses. I like the last couple verses, though. You know what I'm saying? Then they use, it. they use. if any man sin, he has an advocate, they use that. Oh, that's back in two, yeah. yeah. Back in verse two, yeah, they use They'll that. use he who says he has no they got, sin. I mean, they got to skip like this. Is like, a liar. Oh, oh, can't touch that verse. But this one's good. You know what I'm saying? John, it's too much work. So too like, much work for a Christian to use John. It'd be like. They be scratching their no own head. Is a liar. You take them to John, they gonna be perplexed, bro. They be like, now, not all things can be understood. <laughs> <laughs> John has to be the clearest Simplest. book in the Bible. It's like the most simple. I can't help it. Let's this John. John. <laughs> this first John. Yeah. This first John chapter two. I can't help it. We talk. I mean, we we talk about in gathering. We we'll get it real quick. I ain't gonna keep y'all all night. This first John chapter two. I can't help. It. This has to be the most clear book in the Bible. I don't know that even, I mean, Paul is pretty clear and precise about the things that he say. 
But I don't know that Paul's more clear than John. No, John's super flat out. John is just lay it out. It is this. It ain't that. Boom. Do you have any questions? Like, John lay that thing out for you. Watch it. This is 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. First Peter. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye not that ye sin not. Very clearly, I don't want you to sin. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yahushua, the Messiah, the righteous. Alright, if you sin, it ain't over for you. Right? Keep going. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not only ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. That's verse three. Christian, stop right there. That's two. Two? Mm -hmm. Okay, Christian, stop right there at two. Yeah, Let's hear yeah. three. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. They don't, when, when the last time you heard that verse in the Christian church? You heard the other one, right? Let me tell you, we have an advocate. Right there, tell us that. Yeah, they make you feel real good. Like, man, I ain't never had an advocate. You got a lawyer? You know what I'm saying? Never had an advocate. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. We have an advocate. You seeing? You, we have an advocate. Right after that, hereby we know we know him how. If we keep his commandments. I ain't never thought of that part. Keep going. He that says, I know him and keeps not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. How I'm going to be a Christian and I can read this whole verse? You know I got to stop at verse 2. That's it. I'm going to just read verse 2. All right, guys. Uh, it's a good session today. May the Lord be with you. Let's say a prayer. I got to stop right at verse 2. Watch, let's jump over to 3. And hereby we do know that chapter we know. Three. Oh, chapter three. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, chapter three. Verse. Uh, give me verse. Uh, give me verse. Uh, give me verse four. It's chapter three, verse four. First couple of verses, good too. I'm just for time's sake. I'm going by. Whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. That thing. That honestly, that's okay with Christians. They take that because well, just because of what's coming next. Watch what's happening next. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Praise the Lord. That's where they stopped, though. You transgressed the law? That's sin. However, Jesus came to take away all sin. Praise the Lord. That's it. Give me that next verse, T. Whosoever abides in him sins not. Uh -oh. Whosoever sins has not seen him, neither known him. You know, they, now this is where they start. See, the King James Version translates it as sins not. But if you actually look at the Greek, it's a continuous tense. It's in a continuous tense. See, English doesn't, they get to breaking down Greek. But see, the English doesn't pr to have the proper tense. Like English, you have past tense, future tense, present tense. See, Greek has a continuous tense. So what it's saying is, it's almost, it should be translated, whosoever abides in Christ doesn't continue to sin. All right, let's translate it that way. <laughs> that means if you don't continue, that means you what? Stop. All right. How you want it? Out of your cardio. I just don't know. How do you want it? Like, how do you want to hear it? How does it make you feel good? At the end of the day, the book's saying stop. No, it's not saying stop. It just, it just means are you continue? How are you going to define continue? How many times you going to tell me continue? I know if you stop continuing, what'd you do? Stop. You no longer doing it. You stop. If I watch my TV show today, don't finish it. Watch a little bit the next day. Watch a little bit the next day. I ain't never stopped watching that TV show. <laughs> Somebody come up to me and watch. Do you watch Survivor? Yeah. I'll continue. You coming? You gonna watch Survivor next week? Yeah. I mean, I'm not watching it right now, but I'm gonna watch it next week. Do I? Would I say I'm watching that show? Uh, yeah. yeah. What shows are you watching right now? Have you ever asked somebody? You watching any shows on Netflix? I mean, at that moment, are they watching it? No. no. They're going to be like, yeah, man, I got a couple of them. I'm watching uh, Narco, and I like um, I like the other show with, uh, uh, I'm naming all the drug shows, Ozark, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I also like uh, this one, and I like that one. Are they watching them when you talk to them? No. They watching the show. These people, they ain't stupid. They, 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 they stupid when the book start telling them to stop sending. They was like, I have no idea. If you willfully sin. What's an accidental sin? Just give me one. I accidentally cheated on my wife. <laughs> I accidentally divorced my wife and married another one. I accidentally, <laughs> I accidentally stole something. I, I really wanted it. 
I didn't want to steal it, but I stole it, and I was going to give it back, but I didn't. That was an accident. Give, just give me an example of an accident. An accidental side. I stubbed my toe on the wall. I and I accidentally cussed. lied. Okay. You accidentally lied. Okay. Right? You people ain't sending on no accident. You know you would. What's, what's sin, what was the last sin you committed that you did on an accident? Which one you got you all choked up? Oh, my goodness, it was an accident. Stop that line. You know the stuff you're doing on purpose. Stop. I don't understand why we keep playing with God like he don't know. Willfully sin. I don't like hearing none of that stuff. Keep going. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that hey, does look righteousness. At look, at, look, John is trying to be so clear. Don't let anybody. De he know these people about to start lying. Right after, right after <laughs> he read this verse. Right after he read that verse, he is like, they coming up with excuses for it right now. <laughs> Ain't he put this thing out yet? <laughs> yeah, he just sitting there. He's like, you know what? They about to start lying right now. Let me just let me just clear this up. He came right afterwards. Don't let anybody deceive you. Watch how clear he make it. He that does righteousness is righteous. If you do the right thing, you 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 a right person. It, it's how how much more clear can if you do the right thing, you righteous. Keep going. Even as he is righteous. Talking about Yahushua. Just like Yahushua is righteous. You do the right thing, you righteous. Just like Yahushua, who did the right thing, is righteous. But he that commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. How much more clear can it get? If you sin, you're of the devil. If you do righteousness, you're of God. God sent Yahushua to clean up what the devil doing. Right? Keep going. Watch this. He didn't just say it once. So notice he's saying the same thing over. He says, you transgress the law. Yahushua came. To clean up them sins. All right. If you sin. You don't know him. Don't let nobody deceive you now. If you do the right thing. You of God. If you sin. You of the devil. Let me remind you. God came. In the form of Yahushua. To clean up. The stuff that Satan did. Notice he said that part twice. Now watch how he repeat the same thing again. He said he's going to destroy the works of the devil. So if you are of the devil, he's going to destroy you. He cleaned that thing up. What do you do when you pour when you pour sanitizer on your hand? What do you think it's doing? I clean the germ. What that thing say on the front? It cleans germs, right? What does it say right on the front? What well, how much? What percentage do it kill? Ninety nine point nine. That thing gonna say and it say kill, don't it? Two thousand. <laughs> <laughs> that thing say kill right there. Kill ninety nine percent of. What do you think? Anytime when the Most High God say he cleaned something, something died. What do you think he did with Noah? Earth got cleansed. What did he do? Kill all flesh. Same thing. That's how it looked. Right? These people just, we, we just got to wake up. We just got to know what the most, we got to speak his language. That's all it is. He's speaking to us in a different language. He told us he would. We just got to speak his language. Once we speak his language, it's like, all right, gotcha. Let me straighten up. Sorry about that. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Watch how you repeat the same thing again. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. So now he letting you know. He says, if you're born of God, you do not commit sin. Same thing as saying, if you do the right thing, you are of him. Same thing as saying, he came to clean up the transgressions. Right? Keep going. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. He cannot sin? Cannot sin. You are un able to sin because you're born of God. So let's just say, just for just for giggles, I'm born of God. Tomorrow, I sin. What does that tell me? You were never born of God. How do I know I was never born of God, T? Because if you sin, you've never seen him or known him. And how else do I know? What? How else do I know that I was, I was not born of God? Because what comes out of your heart, that makes you unclean. And what about from that verse that we just read? What? The one we just read. Let's read it again. Oh, he cannot sin. Because his seed he is. He told you. He said, you can't sin. Like, if you're born a guy, you can't sin. You cannot sin. What is so, so, let me think. I'm a Christian right now. And you see, the translation of the Greek, you have to look at the word. See, 
it's a it's an anthropolic love. They start throwing out all these big words. Agape. You know what I'm saying? Agape Phileo. Love and Phileo and all this. Be like, what in the world are you talking about? The man just tells you don't sin. That's it. You know what I'm saying? This ain't even all that deep. I I kid you not. Just go take this book to a Christian and watch how deep this book gets. They gonna get to let me let me explain to you. See, John, John spoke in mysteries. Like, what <laughs> are you talking about? This is the most clear thing I've ever seen in my life. They're going to be all over the place. I kid you not. If you think I'm lying, just do it. Just pin a Christian down. Just pick any random Christian. Just pin them down. Just read. What does that mean? What does he mean by this? When he say his seed is in you and you're born to God, just watch. Well, see, brother, see, sometimes God has to, you have to be able to see with the eyes of God. They start saying weird stuff. Like, what are you talking about, right? But at the end of the day, it's clear. It's just there's no explanation for it because they have a worldview that says I can sin, right? And God is going to forgive me no matter what I do, right? But the book is telling them something that's contrary. So now it puts them in a the position where they have to say, my pastor has been lying to me. Or they have to just say, maybe I don't understand what my pastor is saying, right? I don't want to sit here and say my pastor is lying because I know I don't know the Bible as good as my pastor so I'm pretty sure if I take this back to my pastor, my pastor going to show me how it work out. So I ain't about to let this legalistic, you know what I'm saying, law-keeping <laughs> Pharisee come tell me, you know what I'm saying, about called, what my pastor saying. My pastor know everything about the Bible. I would call the Pharisee a couple times. Yeah, they let light your butt up with that Pharisee. I'd be like, what you talking about? <laughs> I'd be like, I don't know why. I don't know why these people call me a Pharisee, Right? Yeah, it's part of his part of said he was being institutionalized. I was like, no, they institutionalized. Yeah, but been institutionalized. <laughs> like, bro, you you institution. We was institutionalized when our mamas was dragging us to church. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Ain't no institution here. Yeah, you know, buddy. Man. Keep going. Let's see what else we got there. You said you cannot sin. That thing strong too. Read yeah. that one one more time. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. <laughs> In this, the children of what they gonna do with that. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Right? He said, "In this, so in that, in the fact that you cannot sin if you're born of God, it is made manifest whether you're a child of God or a child of the devil. Manifest is made obvious. So he's saying the way we know if you're born of God or not. That's what manifest means, made obvious. The way we know if you're born of God or you're not is if whether you're sinning or not." How much more clear can it get than that? Everybody walking around, I mean, how do I know I'm saved? I don't know. Maybe read John. It may read. Maybe John will help you out. I don't know. Give me verse 5, chapter 5. Give me chapter 5, verse, uh, I don't remember. Give me verse 14, maybe. I feel like it should be 14. Yeah, fear is made perfect in love. No. Oh. That's not what I want. Fear is made perfect in love. Or is it love is made? Perfect. Well, oh, you're not reading it? No, I was guessing. Um, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Um, I really can't remember what it says. It's along the same lines, though, of you cannot sin. I just can't remember. Okay. It's in Fido. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, <laughs> b verse. Uh, yeah, tell me what 14 says. And this is the confidence that we have in him if we ask anything according to his will. 15. Uh, and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask. Sixteen. Uh, all on, uh, seventeen says all unrighteousness is sin, and there is no there is a sin. Not oh no. We know that whosoever is born of God sins not. There we go. That, yeah. Yeah. This is eighteen. Yep. Eighteen. So First John chapter five verse eighteen. We know that whosoever is born of God sins not, mm -hmm. but he that is begotten of God keeps himself, and that wicked one touches him not. What are they gonna do with this stuff? What can they do with it? You gotta keep yourself. I mean, it's listen, when you a sinner, it's hard. That thing, you look at that and you be like, man, that's hard. That's impossible. It's impossible for it is impossible for a sinner to 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 live after the word. It's impossible. You have to be cleansed from that stuff. You gotta die to it. You can't be a sinner no more. You have to cease being a sinner and start being something else. As long as you're a sinner, you're right, it is impossible. 
So, uh, like, we all get it why you look at that and you don't want to believe that that's the truth, right? It's, it's, we all get it why a Christian would be like, that can't, just can't be. Why it perplexes them? Because that is impossible for a sinner, right? What we have to look at and be like, what we were talking about before, all things are what? Possible through Christ. Now you start getting a different perspective of what that really means. You start be look, you start looking, man, that's impossible. It's cool when man, it's impossible for me to become a business owner. And then somebody tell you all things are possible through Christ. That thing make us, you know what, brother, you right. You get encouraged by that. When it comes to sin, they be like, nah, that ain't what that verse talking about. You know what I'm saying? I'll be like, what the whole you, book telling you not to think, sin. What you think you're talking about? <laughs> Let me say everything else is possible except turning you away from sin. That's the one thing that's impossible for God. And even Messiah said it himself when he was talking about rich people. It, hey, it's hard. he didn't even say it's possible, though. He said, that thing would be real hard. Yeah, he said, but with, with God, all things possible, though. He said, that thing would be real hard. I mean, that's like trying to take a camel through an eye of a needle. And Peter was like, well, who can be saved then? He was like, look. With God, all things all possible. possible. That's how we have to look at it. God can do this for us. Do we want to do it? Is that what we really want? That's what it comes down to, right? These people just make a fool. We, we, we temporary. Right now, we just sitting in booths. That's it. We just sitting in darn booths, sitting here in the tents, right? What else we got here in five? And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lies in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Yahushua the Messiah. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Give me, uh, we're give supposed me to get Micah Romans. chapter 4, verse 1. All right. Yeah, you ever, you ever read First John? Word. That's what's up. We got us one. <laughs> we got us one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm always going to. Second John, third John, too. Them things just as clear. You know what I'm saying? Those, those, the only, you know what I'm saying? The only reason we don't go to those as much is because one, most of it is covered in, in First John, but um, Second John and Third John, he's writing to specific people. But he got little, little nuggets in there, just as clear. Yeah, uh, Jude got some good stuff too. <laughs> That's my man right there. You know what I'm but he did read. Did used to read though. I remember back uh, when we was at Lawrence. You know what I'm saying? He did used to read. You know, That's all. You just got to keep on read. Let me tell you something. Most of our God is faithful. We ain't about to yeah. sit here. Damn, don't let these people. Everybody you come up to, everybody you meet, gonna tell you they read the Bible from front and back. I was talking to you know what I'm saying. Who I was telling you about earlier. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I was like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was like, nah, you don't know nothing about no Bible. He like, man, I ain't read the Bible front to back. I was like, why don't you stop that line? <laughs> just stop that. Oh, I used to tell that same lie. You know what I'm saying? I used to tell that same lie. Just that same lie. Oh, no, nah, I know the Bible front to back. Don't know a lick of the book. Just don't know it. I used to, let me tell you, I used to know the Bible like the back of my hand. You used to, huh? I mean, people used to tell me that. I was 23, year old, 23 years old and 23-year-olds was telling me that. At what point did you forget? You just were darn born 23 years ago. <laughs> so when did you just read through all the Bible and have enough time to forget at 23? Bro, That's crazy. I read like 20. Not that line. I read like 20 minutes of that day. You know what I'm saying? Yo, pastor didn't preach to you the same books for 13 years is what happened. The same three books of the Bible, he didn't preach out of them for 13 years. And he didn't preach the whole books. He just liked when Jesus walked on water a lot. That's it. I touch on John a little bit. He be mouth. They just tell you lies. All of us didn't You read the Bible for real though, even even under a Christian church, he gonna see you out of it because you trying to find you trying to find the truth and you ain't taking somebody's word for it or you checking behind what they doing or you trying to just confirm so you would know like they know. You looking at this lying pastor? You don't know he lying. Like man, I want to know the word like him. Let me look into my book. What do you think the Most High God gonna, gonna do? Leave you there? No, he's going to start showing you stuff, and eventually your mind going to be intrigued. Because you're familiar now. You might be looking at everything that you're reading just like your pastor is looking at it because he taught you, right? 
But you, when you're looking through it subconsciously, you're taking in all this extra stuff. All this stuff you think is like, oh, that don't really mean nothing, and this, that, and other. Subconsciously, you're taking all that in. Most high God ain't letting that stuff. He, it's not vain to him that you're doing that. That's not empty to God. All that stuff means something. Somebody's going to come by and say to you, like, nah, you believe it wrong, this, that, and other. And they're going to start lighting you up with the word. Then you're going to be like, I do remember reading that. Right? It's going to feel familiar to you. Like, you tell me that. And I don't want to believe it because that ain't what my pastor teach. But deep down, that feel familiar to me. You keep reading that book, he's going to open up the knowledge. That's what it's here for. That's a blessing the most high God give us the mind to read. Because a lot of people don't got the mind. They're not supposed to, to be honest. Either. You'll never see nothing in the Bible to say everybody should read the Bible. Everybody should read the scripture. He set up leaders. The art instruction in the book said follow him. right? Follow Yahushua and follow the people that he have in place. You'll never see where it say follow, what, follow what's written. Go follow the scriptures. Go read it for yourself. He told a man to read for himself. And that was Timothy. And Timothy was what? He was, a, he was a disciple. He was a minister. Mm. Right? The minister, the person who's teaching these things. That's right. Stuff, he, was a, he was an overseer. He's an overseer. He's a yeah. bishop. Right? The person who's teaching these to, to, to study for himself. You study to show the, yourself approved. The normal, the average person, you'll never see that instruction. You'll never see it. And the reason is because the average person is supposed to just follow. We're supposed to have leaders in place that will lead people correctly, and they're supposed to just follow. Ain't nothing, it ain't no shame in just following. You know, I, we sit here and talk. You know how much I wish I could just follow? I sit here and wait. I be pr I praying to God. I pray to God. I just, just send us somebody that will teach us the right thing. Just send I have no, a lot of people just think I need to be in a, you know, I need to lead and all this stuff. You know, you couldn't be more wrong. Deep down, I'm shy. Deep down, I just want to be, you know what I'm saying? I just want to be to myself and don't want to do I just want to, I just want to, look, tell me what to do and let's do it. If I like the plan, I, I say the same thing with my bosses at work. If the plan makes sense, I'm down. You'll never hear from me. I'm just going to do what I need to do and keep going. Only time you're going to hear my mouth, that don't make no darn sense. That's when, when something's wrong, I'm speaking up. Because I'm not, I'm not, you're not about to lead me to a slaughter. That's it. You're not about to lead me down the wrong path, not in me see it. Not if I can see it, like, mm, that don't look like the, no, I'm just going to go anyway. That's crazy to me. That's just insane to me. If God give me the, the, the eyes to see it, I'm be like, nah, let me ask some questions. I might be wrong. Let me ask a couple questions, bro. Let me just make sure. Look like we had it for a clip. All right, just make it show. Right? That's what we have to do. Oh, man, let me tell you. I, man, I pray to God all the time, man. Just send us, send us a prophet. Send us somebody that know the word, that'll teach us, that'll lead us. I'm knuckling down. Y'all never hear my mouth again. I ain't got nothing unless the prophet tell me to do it. Prophet tell me to teach, I'm teaching. He don't tell me to I'm shutting up. I'm sitting right, I'm sitting down on the floor. I don't even want to see. Indian style with notes in my darn hand. And I look like, oh, it ain't about being a leader. It's about making it to God, man. That's it. It's about making sure that when he come back here, I'm right. I don't care about nothing else. And I, if, if it ain't nobody else to do it, then why am I going to sit down if I know a little bit? If I know a little bit of Bible, ain't nobody else teaching this thing right. I'm just going to be quiet to a little bit I know. I'm betraying what God called me to do. He'd be like that dude that hit his uh, money in the ground. That's crazy. I don't have time for it. I got here. I teach. You know what I'm saying? Every, every brother that come in here, I tell them the same thing. I'm teaching so that you will know and that you could become a teacher. If you stood up here and you you start, I mean, you did, you learned the book. And you stood up here and was like, nah, I got this. What do you think I'm going to do? Nah. It's my Bible study. I can get up here and teach. Let me sit my butt down. What you talking about? That's crazy. I don't need that. Listen, I would love. <laughs> let me tell you, I don't think y'all understand. I would love to just show up. That thing is that. Let me. It's it's something special about being in a position where the Most High God is just giving you the direction. Just this is what we have to do. This is what we have to do. It's a lot of burden on being a teacher. T you know, it's, it's it's a lot of burden. It's a, just it's a lot of burden that come with. It. It's a lot of studying that come with it. You got to figure stuff out. You got to bump your darn head. You got to go through. Nobody wants that just because they want it. You only want it because like, the most I got put it on your heart. A lot of these people that do it and they lying, that's why they lying because it's a lie. I ain't got no time to actually do it the right way. Let me tell a couple lies. Let me take a shortcut. Right? Let me just guess. They ain't doing it consciously. They're just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, who can figure this? But this is what they think. Who can figure this Bible out? This is probably what it means. 
So they start teaching it how it probably what it means. If you don't have a heart to actually go through and do it right, you can't be no teacher for guys. And just you're crazy. You got to do it right. Everything you do got to be right. It's Micah 4. Micah 4, verse 1. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. That's the permanent place. Right? We had, a, we had a tabernacle in the wilderness. We started off by accident reading about it in uh, Numbers chapter 1. Right? We read it in Numbers chapter 1. And you start talking about the tabernacle or how they put it together. Right? He's talking about letting it to different parts. Anybody else come to it, a Gentile come up to it, then you're going to be cut off. Right? That was our tabernacle. That thing was just portable. Everything. He said, now, at the end, oh, it's going to be at the top of the mountain. Temple going to be established there. And he said, all the people going to do what? Shall flow unto it. All the people of the world are gonna come to it. What do you think the Feast of Tabernacles is about? Keep going. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways. Uh -huh. And we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion and the world of the and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Where the law gonna go out from? From Zion. And the word of the Lord from where? From Jerusalem. Grab Deuteronomy for me. Deuteronomy chapter 31. Let me show y'all something that we can get up out of here. It's Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 9. We got a temporary place. We looking to get home. We looking to get to New Jerusalem. Talking about this Jerusalem they got over there. You know what I'm saying? I used to want to visit that thing. Remember we used to talk about it? He was like, man, just save us money and get a plane ticket over there. I start seeing how these people are. I was like, no, I'll wait. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> these people are crazy. These people are crazy. <laughs> I'll wait. I'm good. You might ruin you might ruin my perception of the land. You know what I'm saying? People like, I get over there and be like, yeah, and I'll be like, ugh. Ugh. They probably done tried to down and tore yeah. it all up. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait until the most high God cleanse it. You know what I'm saying? We good. I'm patient. Good. When I see it, I just want it to be right. You know what I mean? I get up in there, I just want it to be right. The most I got telling me is maybe if I didn't have a promise out there that it's gonna be right one day, maybe I'd be like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Let just let me get there. But I know me knowing that it's gonna be right, I wait. I wait. I love just my first time seeing it, it's just right. I love my first time seeing it. I would love for God to be punishing these wicked sinners the first time I see it. That thing, that thing just warmed my darn heart. Yeah, Jeremiah said, I walk up in there and I see sinners getting chopped up in our land. Oh, man, I'll be like, praise the most high God. And Jeremiah was like, let me see your vengeance upon them. Yeah, absolutely let me see. I can't wait to darn see it. Have mercy on our people. But, man, you get you you get arrested these people hell. Praise the most high. Praise ye Yah. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the... Let me tell you, these people think they getting away with something. Ain't nobody getting by. Nobody getting by. None of us either. Nobody getting by, even for the little we do. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody getting by. You commit these sins and try to repent and all this stuff. You think you're doing something. You think you escaped something. Ain't nobody escaping. Most like God going to make your butt suffer before you die. Ain't nothing going to go right. Nothing you think going to go right. You just as, you just as destined for heaven or destined for uh, the kingdom as you can be. Most I got, no, you're going to be in the kingdom. He'll, he'll tell you, you're going to be in the kingdom. Almost. But you're still going to suffer. Almost none of my plans ever come to pass. <laughs> no, I think we didn't did too much. I think going to go, I, I think it's going to go. So, I mean, you be that having thing, nice plans. Too. That thing don't never go. Line them way. things up. I just lined up my bills. Them things ain't been right. I, I'm like, okay, I know for a fact this going to go here, this going to go here. This thing going to line up. If I do this, I'm going to have this, that, and the other. We're going to be able to do this, that, and the other. One month in, ain't nothing going right. Card and broke down two darn times. You know, I got all these other expenses. I was like, I don't even know where this thing came from. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Lost my wallet. You know what I'm saying? Can't do everything. Everything then went wrong. How you going? I mean, I don't think y'all understand. A nice plan, though. I spent like two hours lining this thing up for the next. I'm going to be able to save up, buy the house. Just that another. I'm looking right now. A month later, I have to go back to my wife. I don't know. We're going to be able to buy a house now. You know what I'm saying? I'm just. Just judging off this first month, this we one month in of my beautiful plan, and I'm gonna tell you the truth, it doesn't work out. This whole thing went sideways. Uh, never, right? Never go how you planned it. 
what you what am I saying? What I'm saying here? Like, oh God, I can't believe. Nah, I get it. I, <laughs> <laughs> I get it. You know what I'm saying? I yeah, I get it. Food and clothes. That's right. You still right. true. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Food and clothes. That's right. You said that, didn't you? What I'm saying here and complain <laughs> about? We done made a darn mess. We done mess human beings up. Telling these people lies, leading them away, influencing them, doing all types of weird stuff. And now we're going to sit here in the, stead, in, in the stead of the Most High God, in the stead of the apostles, and preach the word? In the stead of, in the stead of prophets, in the stead of preachers? And we're going to stand in as if, as if we represent the Most High God and we don't think we should suffer? That's insane. You done lost your mind if you think you shouldn't suffer after you sinned against the Most High God. That's crazy. You should, it's a glory to suffer at this point. You know you was wrong. That's why I can't, I don't, I don't understand that a person look back on their life and say, you know what? I don't regret it. I regret everything. I regret every bit of it. That's crazy. How you not, not going to regret something that God said was wrong? That's rebellion. You shaping it up as something pretty, you know, because if I didn't go through that, I wouldn't be where I am. Well, duh, dummy. You might be somewhere better. And God told David, he said, I would have gave you way more if you hadn't did that. I would have gave you way. He listed off, you did this. You did, did not, did I not do, get this to you? And I gave you that. And you could have had any of this. And I would have gave you more. That's, when I read that verse, that thing floored me, bro. At, it floored, I looked at that, I said, man, I know God messed with David. I know he messed with David. He looked at him. He had to, you could tell God was pleading with him like, man, why you mess up? I would have gave you more. So I'm looking at that like David just cut it off. He cut it off because of his sin, it ended. And he took his son from him. You know the type of damage that sin has? And it ain't going to be the one. Those of us that are chosen, this is the crazy part. Those of us that are chosen... It ain't going to be us that's affected a lot of the time. It's going to be the people around us. Our mamas, our dad, our, our kids. They're going to be the ones suffering from our mistakes. Yeah, he had his son killed. His other son raised All his, his other son daughter. All his turned against him. His other killed son him. got killed by his boy. <laughs> Homeboy killed his son. He's like a brother he to him. And his brother, like a brother, killed his son. <coughs> This is the this is the effect that sin has though. We sin, it's gonna it's gonna affect everything around us. Most High God gonna save us. It's gonna be all these other people that's not gonna be saved around us falling off. The people that we care about, all types of stuff happening to them. That's what we have to be mindful of. I mean, you gotta regret every bit of it. If you don't regret that stuff, you lost your darn mind. This is Deuteronomy chapter thirty one. Give me verse nine. We can get up out of here. And Moses wrote this law and delivered it unto the priests, the sons of Levi which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord and unto all the elders of Israel. And Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, in uh -oh. the solemnity of the year At the of solemnity release, of the year. Of the year of release, in the Feast of Tabernacles. In the Feast of what? Tabernacles. Ain't that what we're talking about? He said, During the Feast of Tabernacles, I, can't, I don't understand what Moses is about to say next. When all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Gather the people together, men and women and children, thy stranger. Everybody? That is within, men, women, and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates. And the stranger? Okay. That they may hear, and that they may learn, and fear the Lord your God, and to observe to do all the words of this law. And that their children, which have not known anything, may hear, and learn to fear the Lord your God, as long as ye live in the land where ye go over Jordan to possess it. So what do you think Michael was talking about when he said all the people can flow to this mountain? hear the law. And three times a year they gotta come. Y'all sure gonna teach us. During the tabernacles he gonna teach us the law when it's permanent. Right? So much for it being done away with. Uh, yeah, these people, these people make a fool out of that stuff. How you gonna be done away with it? He already told us the law gonna be on our hearts. What, you, what does that mean to these people? Right? You said the law going to be on your heart. What that mean? Okay, I don't have to do it now. If it's on your heart, you don't have to do it. No. You're on gonna, your heart, you're going to love it and you're going to want to do it. You're going to write it in your anyway, part. It's going to be a it's part, part of you. you. That's your DNA at that point. It's just what I do. I ain't even thinking about it. I'm keeping the law. Why wouldn't you? If you know that's the promise, if you know that's in your future, right? Let's just say these Christians really know they saved. And you just know that's in your future. 
Why wouldn't you cherish the law? How can you just say it's done away? That just don't make sense to me. You're right. That's our goal, though. Teach the people. That got to be all our goals. All right? Teach the people. Be patient with the people. Love the people. And teach the people. I say our people have been abused. Right? We have to, when we go over here, I, I, I get here and I make fun of them and all that. But in reality, the, the average of our people have been abused. The leaders, I ain't got no remorse, no mercy. I ain't got no remorse, no mercy on that. You a leader. You, 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 you've, 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 you've taken on a position as if you're teaching God's word, which means now you are deserving of a, of a stronger judgment. Right? So I'm, there's no mercy there. But for the people who follow them, it's just abuse, right? Nobody's taught them much. Nobody taught us anything. Nobody, all these, they just, they just went on and continued the traditions and continued the same old, and we were dumbed down because of it. We got to have a heart to change some of that, right? For anybody looking for the truth, we got to have a heart to let me learn as much as I can learn so I'm prepared when you look. When you start looking, I want to be there to answer your question if God see it. Last thing I want to do for anybody is they come to me with a question that's answerable, and I got to be like, eh. all right, if I don't know, I don't know, but it just I just don't feel good about a question that's answerable and that's pertinent for me to say I don't know. You ask me the details about us being Hebrews, I'm fine with saying I don't know and that type of stuff. You ask me how, how to be saved, I don't ever want to say I don't know. I just don't want to, I don't want to be able to say I don't know. I just want to be able to say, you know what, let me show you this book. Let me show you what the most high God say. Right? You can't read. That's all right. Let me explain it to you. Right? Whatever it is, whatever we got to do, let me make sure I can, I, can, I can open up the book. And that's what I ask for. Just give me what I need to lead your people. Right? As long as I'm going to lead the people, just give me what I need. Most high God been faithful to me, man. Most high God been faithful to me. He's been faithful. He's, I ask him just, a little, just give me a little bit of wisdom to lead some people. Most I God been faithful over the last five, six years, man. The most I God been faithful. I can testify that stuff. You know, they get up in the church and say, "I got a testimony." <laughs> I can give you my testimony. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got no testimony that I was laying in the bed sick. I had cancer and he healed me. I ain't got that tell you. Me one, my testimony is. I just read. What he said with this book, that ain't true. That's my test. My testimony is his testimony. I just read it. You know what I'm saying? That's my test. My testimony is his testimony. I opened up the book. I ain't here. I no spirit came down on me, and I didn't see a vision of an angel. I ain't had none of that, none of that. You know what I had? I just opened up the book. I looked at it. And most of God saw fit that that thing makes sense to me. Not right away, right? <laughs> wasn't like one day. It wasn't like no special miraculous event. The pages were glowing. I felt the presence in the room. None of that. No, it was long, hard year after year reading the book. Starting to start, start teaching on it, being wrong about some stuff, debating some people about some other stuff. Eventually, uh, not nah, it makes sense now. That's faithful to me. That's faithful to me. There's a lot of people out here can't get it, and they they clawing for it. Book tell you too. He said, "Many shall be searching, but won't find a way." We got a narrow. We got a narrow way to walk. Yeah, 5,000 people followed him, only 12 got the message, you know what I mean? And we had all our people in the wilderness, only two got, got to get, go in from that generation. Two. Two. That's it. Moses didn't get it, Aaron didn't get it, right? Two people, Joshua, Caleb. That's it. It's crazy. It was millions in the wilderness. And that's the only part of people from that generation that made it in. That's crazy. That, that's insane. But that's the numbers game that we're dealing with. That's why. That's why. That's why a lot of people. They, you know, what I'm saying they. They say, oh, but don't. Don't you feel like you should have more people coming to the Bible study? It's like, that thing look about right to me. From what I, eight from what people. I read, they look about right to me. Eight people who know his art destroyed the whole world. Only eight in art. Numbers look good to me. <laughs> Crazy. I'll be looking at it like, huh? Hey, T, you here? Oh, we right on schedule. <laughs> that thing makes sense. You know what I'm saying? That makes sense. How many people in Las Vegas? Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. Right? That's how it look. Because we got to imagine. We ain't the only ones. There's other people around. There's other people around the world. Whole nation. Whole nation of people. Whole country. Only 7,000. Can you imagine like only 7,000 Americans? Let's just say uh, like God had a, you know what I'm saying, had like America's number was called. 
and 7,000 people from here. The whole country. Yeah. All right, no, not, well, not, only 7,000 were, only 7,000 didn't compromise they, their faith. You know what I'm saying? So you got a nation, all these people, all of them claim to be right. But it turns out only 7,000 of them is really, is really doing this. Yeah, I mean, in America, I mean, however many people live in America, like we talk about like one nation, you know what I'm saying? 7,000 out of like millions. Probably. He told Elijah, he was like, man, everybody in this nation, wicked, they all trying to kill me. He was like, just relax, I got 7,000. You know what I'm saying? Elijah thought like, everybody was bad. Yeah. <laughs> Elijah was looking, everybody say they was good. They were telling Elijah, everybody was like, nah, we, we prophesying to God, right? But he was looking at them like, all oh, y'all lying. He thought everybody was like that. And God was like, nah, I got 7,000 7, that ain't bowed down to Baal. All right? It's important that we able to look at it, we able to understand it, and be able to accept what the Most High God is calling us for. So when I say calling us, I ain't talking about being a preacher. I ain't talking about being a this, a deacon, and all that. All that stuff. <clears throat> all that's secondary. Right? That's out on the table if we meet the quali qualifications. But that's secondary. A calling, the calling of the Bible that the Bible is talking about is one thing. Obeying that word and living it through for the rest of your life. You do that, you call by God. Right? On top of that calling, you may be called to do some other things. But that's that's bare minimum. Otherwise, you put yourself in a position. If you think you're about to preach the word without the first calling, without obeying the word, you're Balaam. You're going to get there. You're going to bless the people. Do what God told you to do. And your butt going to be out of there in a couple months. He's just going to use you, and then you gone. Right? No different than how he used the king of Assyria, the king of Babylon, talking about Nebuchadnezzar. Right? No different how he used anybody else where he has a will, he wanted to be done, he used you to do it, get your butt out of there. He has that for good stuff and bad stuff, how you want it. Yeah, he's like, you know what I'm saying, king of Babylon, my servant. And a couple chapters down, oh, yeah, I'm going to get Babylon. No one worry about it. I'm punishing them. They're going to be done. Lined him up real quick. <laughs> Right, line him up real quick. These these kings think they running something, they think doing something. Yeah, God, and I gave it to God. I tell you, I gave it to you. He said, I put this stuff in the king of Babylon hand. Right? I gave it to him for everybody to serve him. That's why I ain't listening to nobody talking about this. Ain't no book like our book. We ain't got no, you ain't gonna find no religious text that criticize the people that, that that's about the text. This whole book criticizes us. Right, the people that wrote it, this whole book is critical of. Make them look stupid. Talk about them. Tell them that they sinners. They walked away. When you gonna see the Quran talk about how how all Muslims are sinners? How these Muslims can't live up to what what God called them to do? No, that thing it gonna make. You, let me tell you how the Quran go. Muslims good, everybody else bad. That's not how this book is written. This book is written it. This is about Israelites. Y'all Israelites ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't ever do the right thing. I gave Whole you book everything. Get at us. <laughs> I gave you Tell everything. Tell me another book that's like that. <laughs> you don't listen. You're not going to find it. I got to send myself in the form of y'all. <clears throat> you see these people, these people make a fool. They, nobody gives an objective look at the book. You know what I'm saying? And that's what causes people to, to err and go astray. It's our job now. I'm telling you, I ain't backing down. Y'all say whatever y'all want to say. I This book? Oh, I got some defense for that. You just asked a question. You tell me what you need to know. This book makes sense, though. You ain't about to here and tell me this book. I ain't stupid. How you know? How you know it's the truth? Because I ain't stupid. <laughs> and I read it. Have you read it? I don't need to read it. Well, that's why you don't know. You ain't going to ask me how you know. The reason why you think, the reason why it's such a mystery is because you don't know. Like, of course. I get it. I understand. You don't know. Once you know, it ain't a mystery. It's very clear. It's the truth. Even the people that don't really know the Bible know that. It's like you can look you. at it and tell there's it's something different. Yeah. Ain't nothing like it in the world. They want you to pretend like you don't know. So I got to yeah, pretend like I don't know. Cause Not me. You know, they try to make it an opinion game. You just gonna, you just gonna be mad. <laughs> You're just so arrogant. I was telling one at home. I was like, from my, uh, from high school. I was like, bro. He's like, you know what I'm saying. Nobody could really know. That's why everybody debate opinion. I was like, bro. What I'm saying is not opinionated. This thing, all facts. You know what I'm saying. These are not opinions. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Not in the least. Ain't got time, man. We yeah. got to crazy. We got, we got, we got. It's too. Just like Yahushua said. It's a limited hours in the day. It's too late in the day. Too late in the day to play around. We in these tents, and eventually it's time for us to to put on incorruptible. All right? 
or it's time for us to be resurrected unto death, right? But I have higher hope for us. Right? Most high God exposed us to something, and that's something that we can't turn back on. The man that put his hand to the plow, he can't look back. Right? You get to looking back, man. That's when you gonna get you get your butt left. We saw what happened to uh, Job's wife. Lot's Job wife. Lot's wife. <coughs> Lot's wife. Right. We saw what happened to her. Whole whole thing turned into salt. We ain't got time for this stuff, man. We just gotta make sure that we focus our mind. We give up all this stuff, all this little side stuff that's going on that that can distract us and make sure we represent right for the people and that we sacrifice ourselves for the people and we carry each other's burdens. Even our sister. You know what I'm saying? She sent a message today. You get the message? Who? She sent a message on Facebook. No, who? I talk I'll talk about it offline one more okay. time. Make sure we carry each other's burdens. That thing convicted me. I was sitting there like, man, you know what? I ain't even checked that. You know what I'm saying? So, so you got to make sure we do that. Anyways, any questions? Let's pray out. <clears throat>